Hey! Yeah! What's happening? We talking basketball today, baby. Yes, sir. We talking basketball. The NBA is back, y'all. Let me gonna cut this down. Yeah. My main man, T.I.P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, man? If you were looking at this face and listening to this voice, you are officially on the hot seat. I'm your esteemed host, Smoke. And as I said, the NBA is back, y'all. We talking basketball today, man. So y'all come on in, sit down, buckle up, because let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to start off. Uh, it ain't going to be more so of a preview. It's going to be like a primer, you know, just get you ready for the season, what to expect, things of that nature, man. Get us all up to the finals. I'm not going to make no predictions. I'm going to do that shit. But um, what I'm going to do is start from one conference, go to the next, talk about things we need to talk about. Like, I'm not going to waste your time with – what the Minnesota Timberwolves got to do to make it to the damn finals, right? We're not going to do that, you know. So, uh, we're going to talk about the teams that matter, right? So, we're going to start with these because that's going to take the least amount of time for obvious reasons. Um, I probably got my top four teams in the East in no particular order. Of course, the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, you got the reigning, defending NBA MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo over there, man. Uh, wonderful season. They won 60 games last year. I love Coach Budenholz and what he brings to the table and what and definitely what they do defensively. Um, you got the – who I got next? Um, Philadelphia 76ers. I like the – I am a big JoJo Embiid fan. I love Joel Embiid. Uh, he and um, – what's my man? My ben Simmons make a dynamic duo. Uh, they spent a lot of money to get Al Horford over there. Whoo, shit. Spent a lot of money to get Al Horford. Spent a lot of money to keep Tobias Harris there. <laughs> shit, they spent a lot of money. Um, got Josh Richardson as well. Uh, I like I like everything about the Philadelphia 76, to be honest with you. Um, I would probably say my third team is the Boston Celtics. Um, I'm not one of those people who believe that Kemba Walker and Kyrie Irving are interchangeable, but I do believe he fits that team better as it relates to a leadership standpoint. I think he's easier to get along with, things of that nature. Um, they just paid Jalen Brown a fuckload of money. Not exactly sure why they did that either. Um, it's time for Jason Tatum to take that next step. If Jason Tatum doesn't take that next step, this team goes nowhere. Uh, where it is, Gordon Hayward looks like the Gordon Hayward they paid all that money for. Looks like the Gordon Hayward they signed the max deal to. So, we'll see how they perform. And I was kind of, I guess, torn between the number four team in the East. It was out of the Heat and out of um, what's my, uh, the Nets. But I'm going to go with the Nets because I really like Kyrie Irving. Um, I think the Heat may be a tad bit more talented, maybe just a little bit. But I like um, I like the coach. I think his name is Atkinson over there uh, with the Nets. Uh, like I said, I like uh, Kyrie Irving. I like Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, all those guys. I just like the team as a whole. So that's what I got in the East. Um, when you look at things on the grander scale, it's really a two-team race. You know, I don't know what the fuck we sitting there talking about these other two teams for. <laughs> I'm not going to waste your damn time to mother two team like I told y'all earlier. It's a two-team race. Milwaukee Bucks. Philadelphia 76ers. Um, here's my problem with the uh, Bucks. As they are constructed, they are as Greek freak fin- friendly as they can be, right? They got shooters everywhere. They play great defense. That is a really good basketball team, and they're really well coached. I think they're going to have a great regular season, just like they did last season. The problem is, you look at, Everybody's excited about this season, right? Because there's so much parity. Probably for the first time since um, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen played in Boston, the big three, the PGA Tour. We haven't seen this much parity since then. That's why I'm super, I'm uber excited about this season because we don't know who's going to win. We have an idea. Of course, there's a favorite every year, right? But you look at how many so-called dynamic duos there are across the league. There are probably at least ten. When was the last time we were able to say that, right? The Bucks are not one of those 10 teams. Giannis Antetokounmpo doesn't really have any help. And I know you finna pull, uh, what the, uh, Middleton, not, uh, Middleton not your ass. I ain't finna let you do it. 
I remember Middleton folding like a fucking church chair in them conference finals. Mind you, the Bucks went up two nothing in that series. And as far as I remember, they had home court advantage. Chris Middleton disappeared. For, I mean, this guy averaged what? 13 points shot 41% from the field? He ain't get there is no reason on the face of this fucking planet where Brooke Lopez should have been a second leading scorer in their series on their team. No fucking reason. You look at the fact that you were playing an elite defensive team with uh, Toronto when they had Kawhi Leonard. There should have been somebody to at least alleviate some of the pressure from Giannis Antetokounmpo, and there was nobody. When you – Page and Eric Bledsoe. Page and Eric Bledsoe. That motherfucker disappeared too. Matter of fact, that some bitch didn't even know the goddamn series was going on. If I was Greek Freak, I probably would have whooped his ass after the series. It, Bledsoe probably averaged 10 points and shot like 29% from the field. Hold on. Hold on. Let me repeat that. He averaged 10 points and shot 29% from the field. And they just paid that cat a few months prior. They, just, they had just paid him. Come on, man. You may, as things are currently constructed, you may make it out of the East. But when you face some of them goddamn teams in the West, whichever one make it out, you a dead duck. I don't play none of that shit. You bring your ass in here with that one superstar and see what happened to you. You're going to get your ass blistered. He doesn't have any help. That's my only – like they got Kyle Corver. They got a great bench. Like I said, the team is constructed well around him. This is where you put on your GM hat. It's where you put on your big boy GM pants. And not necessarily saying you have to pull a Masai Ujiri, but you have to make a gamble. You have to do something because you bringing in Wes Matthews, that ain't that, that ain't the move. Truth be told, you probably paid the wrong guy. You let Matthew, Matthew I'm sorry, Malcolm Brogdon walk. And you kept Eric Bledsoe. Nah, that ain't how that should have went. If there was one person you should have kept out of them too, it should have been Matthew Brogdon. You need to go out here and find somebody who is going to alleviate some of the scoring pressure when things get tough. If you look at as quiet as it was kept to move the Portland Trailblazers, man, I think it was at the trade deadline to get a Rodney Hood. If the play, if the Trailblazers don't have Rodney Hood, they don't make it out of the second round, period. There are guys out there who are available. There are guys out there who can fit the bill and get you to where you need to be. You just have to do your damn homework. Like a Zach Levine from Chicago, 6'5", shoot over 35% from the field, can score at all three levels, gets 24 points a game, can create his own shot with ease, run any ISO play you want him to run, he's good out the pick and roll. That's the cat you need to go target. And he has somewhat of a friendly contract. You have to do your job and get that man some help because if you don't, he's going to be on the first thing smoking. And God damn it, I can't blame him. If that team underperforms, if that team doesn't make it to the finals, I'd leave too. You have to show that cat that, hey, listen, we are willing to build around you and give you whatever you need. Because if you don't, you risk losing one of the top three players in the league. And it sounds as if he's at the very least open to coming back. So moving on, um, like I said, I love the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, I don't know who said it. I don't remember. But somebody said losing to the um, – Raptors in the second round was the best thing that could happen to Joel Embiid, and I agree. The amount of pain in that boy face from the time that ball dropped in that net to the time he got in his girlfriend's arms, that was some real deal. Shit, he didn't mind. He, he wasn't trying to hide it. He was so vulnerable to that. You, it, it was raw. You don't forget that shit. That sticks with you forever until you can – the only remedy for that is winning. The only women to ex- exercise those demons – is to get past that, that, that moment, get, get, get further in the playoffs, and win. That's it. That's motivation. I'm pretty sure that young man kept up with him throughout this uh, offseason. Somebody, please. Somebody, please, for the love of everything holy, let's get a, a GoFundMe page. Let's pray. Let's get Ben Simmons a jump shot. He need it. For 10 cents a day. You can get that boy a jump shot. Let, let's do our part. Let's get Ben Simmons a jump shot. I don't know how far this team can go without him having one. 
that team is so easy to defend with him not having the jump shot. Because the biggest problem the Philadelphia 76ers are going to face in these playoffs, whenever we get to them, when it comes crunch time, who the fuck going to shoot the ball? Jimmy Butler gone. He long gone. Down there in Miami. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Down there in Miami. Who? Listen, man. If it's crunch time and Ben Simmons got the ball and he got the top of the key, I'm just going to stand up under the motherfucking net. You shoot that bitch out there from all day long. You shoot that motherfucker from out there and you make it, hey, good, good, good game. See y'all next summer. I'm willing. If you beat me from out there, then fine. But I know you're not. You paid, you 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 backed up the Brinks truck for Tobias Harris. I don't think he's that guy. If he is, great, wonderful. It's gonna be hard as fuck to score against those guys. Keep an eye. Keep the name you need to remember is Matisse Thibault. You talk if defense is the, the game, that's his fucking name. All that team gonna do play defense. Josh Richardson, very athletic. You got Al Horford in the middle, smart, savvy. Understand the game inside and out. Pick and pop threes. Bang down low. He can switch over and play the five when you put Joel and B. Because you remember in the playoffs when Joel and B got on the, got off the floor, that team looked like shit. They, they, that is a really good basketball team. A really good basketball team. But when you get in these playoffs and you get in these pressure cooker moments, because the thing about the playoffs is you play teams who, as you go further, the teams get better. The defenses get better. The coaches get smarter. Well, it's already easy to defend you as it is. Who the hell are you running ISO for? You run an ISO with Tobias Harris. See your ass next summer. If he if he has turned into that player, then great. Wonderful. See y'all in the finals. If he if he hasn't <laughs> shit, you in trouble. Right? So that's pretty much all I got to say about the Eastern Conference. Like I'm let me say this before I go any further. All this shit gonna change next year. And I got three words for you motherfuckers. Kevin Wayne Durant. Yes, sir. The best play the best player in the league. No, he can't say that right now. That title belongs to Kawhi Leonard because Kevin Durant isn't playing this season. But hey, if he was, if he was, he'd be the best player in the league. So I'm going to say that before we move on from the Eastern Conference because that's a bad motherfucker. The greatest scorer I have ever laid eyes on. And these eyes have seen Kobe Bryant. These eyes have seen Michael Jordan. That is the best scorer I have ever seen. Bar none, hands down. That's a bad man. When he come back, shit, shit. <laughs> let's go. Shit, let's, let's fucking go. Like I said, man, moving over to the West Conference. Now we talking. Hey, I'm clip show. Oh, I know I just pissed off some motherfucking Lakers fans with that clip show. We start out with the clip show. Man, if if if, if Kawhi Leonard ain't pull off the biggest coup in the NBA history, <laughs> shit. You know how cool it is to play teams against each other? Like you telling this team to do this and you telling this team to do that. You know, like, that—that that is so fucking cool to have two teams. You got both teams by the, by, by the nutsack, you know, um, and to pull off what he did with, you know, Paul George, man, that was beautiful. i uh, not going to spend too much time talking about that. Um, I don't know how you – they're the favorite. They should be the presumptive favorite because they have the best player in the league right now, Kawhi Leonard. Um I don't know what more you can say about it. He, depending on how many games he plays this season, you're probably looking at the NBA MVP. Um, the perfect sidekick is Paul George. Perfect. I don't know if there would have been a better sidekick for him than what you see in Paul George. You look at how that team was constructed before they got there. Shit, Montrez Harrell, a grown ass man down there. A grown man. Sweet Lou Philadelphia, middle motherfucking well. 
I want to slap the piss out of Patrick Beverly just watching him play. He's an irritant that we haven't seen since, shit, probably Ron Artest. You got Big Zubak down there. That team is really, really good, and they got a good coach. It's theirs for the taking. The only thing that's going to derail them is injury. You can book it. I said it. Those are your NBA champions right there. Unless somebody gets hurt, I don't see nobody beating them. I ain't even finna waste that much time talking about it. Y'all know what it is. Y'all see what it is. That team that tough as a motherfucker. The Lakers. Man, the Lakers good this year. Shit, the Lakers good. It's going to be, you know what? It's going to be really, really hard to score on them in the paint. No, I'm talking about A team or B team. When you got the starters out there, you got to contend with Anthony Davis. You got to contend with JaVale McGee. When you got the bench in there, you got to contend with uh, Dwight Howard. You have a uh, rim protector in there at all times. I love the acquisition of Danny Green and the acquisition of, um, what's the guy's name? His, his name escapes me at the moment. Uh, 6'2 guard went to Texas. But um, those two guys, like, shit. Those are your quintessential 3 and D guys. Play good to great defense. And then after all is said and done, they can go on the other end, spot up and knock down the open three which is what you need playing with a LeBron James, which is what you need playing with an Anthony Davis. I think that um, the, the, the one thing I'm excited about this season is to see Anthony Davis play with somebody like LeBron James. That is going to be so fucking exciting because you saw him wasting his career away over there in New Orleans. They weren't going to be able to build a winner over there because you can't. it's kind of hard to – Get a superstar to come play with you. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you, you what uh, Steve and they call the Smoothie King Center, <laughs> some shit like that. I mean, like, Anthony Davis may be the most talented power forward in the NBA history, not named Kevin Durant. You could argue he's probably more talented. And that's saying something because I think Kevin Durant is clearly the most talented power forward in the NBA history. And you look at everything this cat does, everything he brings to the table, Anthony Davis is a bad motherfucker certified bad motherfucker and to finally see him pair with somebody like a LeBron James shit it, it's, it's gonna be fun to see I like the way that team is constructed the only weak link is gonna be their head coach they got the best goddamn assistant coaches in the league I love Lionel Hollins and I love uh, Jason Kidd even more but I have no motherfucking faith in Frank Vogel none if there's some decisions to be made in clutch moments that son of a bitch damn sure ain't gonna make them I I I don't see it. He gonna have them playing defense. I think they're gonna be really good defensively. But Avery Bradley, they, I don't know why the fuck that name just came to me all of a sudden. But Avery, Avery Bradley is a cat I was talking about with Danny Green. No disrespect, to Avery Bradley. Shout out to the brother. Avery Bradley is one of the best on ball defenders that I've ever seen in my life. When he's healthy, I've never seen nothing like. I ain't gonna say I've never seen nothing like because I remember Tony. Uh, um, what's the kid? Play for, why am I? I got a real convenient case of amnesia today. God damn, Tony Allen. Shit, I remember Tony Allen. Um, on ball de- defense, it's shit. It, it's hard for you to find somebody better than Avery Bradley. I love that cat. Shout out to him. Um, I don't, I think the Lakers have enough shooting. Um, I think they have enough um, players that have different skill sets to complement one another. I just think they're gonna run into the wrong team, and that wrong team is the Clippers. Clip show. Clip show. Right. Um, moving on. You got the Rockets. You already know. You got uh, what James Harden. You got Russell Westbrook. Listen. In preparation for this particular show, I was trying my best to figure out how the fuck Russell Westbrook fits in. And I still don't know. And I'm a huge Russell Westbrook fan. I love that cat. But I don't know how he fits in here. You 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 look at what made it work with Chris Paul. Chris Paul was able to give up playmaking roles and be a spot-up shooter. He was able to, like, if you look at how many threes Chris Paul attempted a game, it was a career high in both years. He was able to play that role. Listen, man, if you going to leave – uh, Russell Westbrook out there to shoot threes, like to play out the ball and be a catch and shoot guard. I'm leaving your ass out there. I just go get the rebound. Some, you know, I mean, come on, man. Um, 
I don't have any faith. It's, I, I got two reasons why they won't go any fucking where. And both the reasons are called Mike D'Antoni. He, that shit you're doing ain't working. And while the Western Conference is getting better, it's getting more competitive, You, I'm not going to say you stay stagnant because you added Russell Westbrook. But how do those pieces complement one another? I think they'll be fun to watch. I think they'll put on a great show in the regular season. But it, like I told you the same thing about in the Western Conference with – um. You know how you face better teams, you face better opponents, you face better defenses, you face better coaching. I don't know how this is going to work basketball-wise. I hope it does because I like both players, but I, I just don't fucking see it. Even if it does, great. But somebody would have to tell me right now how those two can coexist and both be effective. Because by him, by themselves, they're great. They're not very efficient. And you, as a matter of fact, they're probably the two most inefficient motherfuckers on the on, on the place on on the planet Earth. Uh, we talking about turnovers, shooting percentage, uh, usage ratings. Like, god damn, how usage rating to me isn't great. That's not really a good thing. I saw other people brag about the shit, but I just see it in reverse. I see the other end of it. Um, I gonna spend uh, not gonna spend too much more time talking about the Rockets, Warriors. Um, I think. D'Angelo Russell is going to fit in better with the Warriors, better than most people think he is. Because you saw when Kevin Durant was there, they implemented a certain amount of um, isolation plays, a certain amount of one-on-one plays. And, uh, I mean, you do that because you have Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is the best player in the world. He's the best scorer I've ever seen. But you, that doesn't mean you take away their recipe. I think you continue to do that because he's a really good one-on-one basketball player. He shoots a decent amount. He can create off the dribble. He can create for others. I think he's going to fit in well. They say Clay Thompson is going to play this season. We'll see how that goes. But right now, I can see them still being a top four, top five team in the Western Conference. So, now you got this clusterfuck of teams. (laughs) I call them a clusterfuck of teams because right now you have the media hyping up three teams. The Portland Trail Blazers, the Utah Jazz, and the Denver Nuggets. Okay, so Denver Nuggets, you come on here, you sit down first. Oh, uh, listen. Matter of fact, all, all y'all come in. All y'all come in and sit down so I can tell y'all the same thing. Um, no. No. Let me tell you something. In order to beat a team with a superstar, in most cases, you have to have one. Well, now one of the motherfucking teams have one. The closest thing you would have to a superstar on either team would be Dame Lillard. Like, you, you look at Dame Lillard last year. Great seven game series against the Nuggets. He wasn't the star of that damn show. CJ McCullum was and Rodney Hood. I think he averaged 25 points, but he barely shot 40% from the field. He wasn't the engine that made that system go. Now he's had his moments. They call him Logo Lillard. I get it. He 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 has his moments. But I don't know anybody who has confidence that he could lead a team to a promised land. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I don't fucking see it. You look at all the money the Nuggets didn't gave Jamal Murray. It's because they hope he ascends to superstardom. They hope he ascends to a superstar level. I don't see it. I just don't see it. If he does, great. Because that team is built really well. You got Nikola Jokic, second best fan in the league. I don't give a good goddamn who says different. Fuck his first team out of the NBA. They stole that shit from Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid should have been first team out of the NBA center. Moving on. I like the Nuggets. I think they are a good team. Good teams don't win NBA titles. Great teams do. Nuggets, you going over there and you sit by the Portland Trailblazers, all right? Be with y'all in a minute. It leaves us with Utah. Utah's going to go as far as Donovan Mitchell takes them. We all know that. The problem is, I don't think it's going to take them that far. Like, we didn't see his game progress. Like, I think his scoring average increased, but his shooting percentage decreased. His scoring average increased just as much as his shooting average decreased, right? That means you plateaued. You did, your, your game didn't necessarily get better. You were along with Jason Tatum. Your, your game didn't go to the next level like it should have. So, here we are having a conversation. You bring in Mike Conley. So, if your game is going to get better, 
that is the exact person you want to play alongside for to make your game get better because he's going to make things a whole lot easier for you. He is an immense upgrade over, over Ricky Rubio, right? That team plays great defense. They have a really, really good coach in Quinn Snyder. Remember him way back when he was at Missouri. But I just don't see it. Listen, t- again, to beat teams with superstars, you have to have them. Those three teams don't have them. And I don't know where you're going to go get them. From. Unless you're the 2004 Detroit Pistons, you're not going to beat a team that got superstars. The only reason why they beat the Lakers is because Kobe Bryant decided to be a dick and not pass Shaq the ball. He passed Shaq the ball. They win that series easily. So I don't know. You, you name me a goddamn team that didn't have a superstar but beat team with superstar. When was the outside of – and that was 15 fucking years ago – with uh, Detroit, find me a team that was super starless and won the NBA championship. Oh, wait. Somebody play the Jeopardy music. That's what I mean here. So, if you can't find anybody, I'm going to assume that those three teams I told you will sit over there, they're going to be sitting there for a while. They'll be great to watch. They'll be a good tune-up for the Lakers or for Houston or for um, – the clip clip show for the Clippers, but they're not going no fuck. They they not they don't put fear in anybody's heart. You can sit here and listen to this bullshit if you want to, but at the end of the goddamn day, it book this shit. Superstars beat superstars. Role players and and really good players and shit. They don't beat no motherfucking body. So while I, the, the conversation shouldn't be geared towards talking about what they can do to get to the finals. They ain't going to do a motherfucking thing. Listen, it, who, what amount of money are you be, are you betting that the Nuggets would beat the Clippers? None. What amount of money are you betting that the uh, Portland Trailblazers would beat the Lakers? None. And you already know why. Um, Like I said, man, I am bullish – I am bullish on the Clippers. That it's like the perfect fit, you know. Um, let me tell you, what camera I look at? What this camera? Let me tell you something. If LeBron James does not decide to play defense this season, Lakers setting themselves up for a world of hurt. Because at the end of the damn day, he's gonna have to lock horns with Kawhi Leonard. Ain't no two ways about it. He's gonna have to defend that cat. And this video is being recorded the day after the first game of the season. So, I saw that goddamn game against the Clippers and the Lakers last night. That motherfucker disappeared. He didn't show up. He, I think Kawhi ran off like five buckets in a row or some shit. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know if LeBron's on the goddamn flow. In order for that team to contend and like realistically beat the Clippers, He's going to have to be the LeBron we saw back in Miami. And not to say that he just fell off the cliff and he's just that far from it, but that LeBron engaged in everything. He was an elite passer. He was an elite scorer. He was an elite defender. He's going to have to do that this series. Him saying that he's going to play second fiddle and be a catalyst for Anthony Davis, that shit cool during the motherfucking regular season. During the postseason, this is your time. You are supposedly the best player you you said yourself you're the best player in the league it's time to show at that time it's going to be the prime time for you to show the shit do not let this opportunity slip from you rise to the occasion defend that cat one-on-one mano a mano make it hard for him because if you don't that series might not go six games that's my two cents guys i appreciate y'all tuning in for this man um like always Hit the like button for me, man. Hit the uh, hit the please hit that subscribe button for me, man. All the comments y'all leave, I'm going I get back to every last one of them. I appreciate all the uh, dialogue you, we share, but as usual, hey. Also follow me on Twitter at the Hot Seat 19. Follow me on Instagram at the Hot Seat 19. We have great conversations on Twitter. I, I appreciate all the feedback y'all give me, man. But you are officially off the hot seat. Until next time, y'all be good.